Hey everyone, uh, Tim here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Tim's Oregon Explorations. Uh, so today I am um, near the town of Brooks, which is just north of uh, north of uh, uh, Salem, and um, I'll be checking out this event that they're having today. This is at uh, Powerland Heritage Park. Um, they're having um, all kinds of stuff here. They're having a um, See, they're having a swap meet. Uh, they're having a, it's a one eighth scale uh, um, train rides, a double decker tr trolley from like the, I think from like the, um, uh, the twenties. They have like, I guess uh, a couple of museums here um, um, that I'm gonna check out. So uh, that's what we'll be doing today. So please follow me. Just a bunch of uh, old tractors. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, that's Alice Chalmers from 1931. There's just a bunch of old tractors in here. Holdies in here, wow. Yeah. International Harvester. Wow, December 14th, 1909. This is a 1920 Hyder with Hyder plow lift. This Model D 9 through 16 horsepower tractor was rated as a two plow tractor and is fitted with patented Hyder plow lift. It uses a Waukesha Motor Company Model R engine with an infinitely variable speed friction drive from the engine flywheel. The engine slides fore and aft to vary the speed. It's a 1914 little ball, single wheel drive. It's 1917, Happy Farmer. Oh, 
pretty cool seeing these old tractors. <laughs> I'll be back later. I'll get some stuff. <laughs> yeah, so what so I read, they have a, a one eighth scale train that you can actually ride on and a, a double-decker trolley, but we're going to do both of those. Thank you for visiting Willow Creek Railroad. Your donations are gladly accepted as we do not receive any portion of the main date receipts. Almost all of our operating revenues come from generous donations from people like you. Model Railroad, not an amusement park ride. For safety, you must follow the safe riding rules posted on the sign at the entrance of the station. If you break any of these safety rules, you may be asked to leave. To summarize the safe riding rules, follow train crew instructions at all times. Once you are seated, do not move your seat. Keep your feet in or on your car and always face forward. Do not lean out, rock the cars, or attempt to grab anything while riding or you may derail the train. If you drop anything, please let one of the Willow Creek members know and they will get it for you. When the ride is over, do not get off until the station master says it is safe to do so. Finally, have fun, and please consider leaving a donation to support our operations. Thank you for riding. All aboard, there you go. All right, have fun. Right if you get work, send money.
that's a problem. means no longer moving, either forward or backward. Danny, can you get the exit, please? Excellent. Hey, thank you for joining us today. Exit's over here by your right. The back So it's like way over there. Okay. Because that's where I want to go is where the trolley is.
This place is pretty cool. Like this.
looking for doors for this uh, truck museum. <laughs> yeah, I'll find them. I want to get into this truck museum. Pacific Northwest Truck Museum. It's going there. Sleeper. So you better known as the coffin, 36 inch model used from the late 40s through the 80s and in a few cases still used on new equipment. So it's home for thousands of, of over the road drivers for years. You might find a sleeping bag, a pillow, and a bag with a change of clothes and a sleeper like this. Seems like more poor conditions, but before the coffin sleeper was used, drivers had to sleep over the wheel or bunk down in the trailer with the freight. <laughs> uh, Paymaster. See, Dean ha Haben Siphon, Siphon dreamed of a truck easier to service and with better fuel economy, when you're an owner-operator, you spend most of all your Saturdays maintaining and servicing trucks. Dean said in response, in 1962, he started planning and drawing up blueprints for his paymaster. Wow. Yeah, it's called the paymaster. Oh, it's a 71 paymaster. Oh, it's the Mac. That is really neat. Here goes the Dolan chair. Yeah, it's right there on that chair. Can we go in that? No. No. It's a 1984 uh, Freightliner. All right, big smiles. That is super cool. Yeah, it's an 81, 84 Freightliner. It's another one. See the dog right here? Yeah. Mac dog. That's cool. Oh, it's a 1990 Freightliner. Oh, cool, and there's another building with more trucks in it. Oh, we're going to check all of it out, dude. 52 flight, Freightliner. Ew, a snowplow. 59. Nineteen fifty six Peterbilt three fifty one flatbed. Used as a log truck in Springfield, Oregon for a decade, sold 
to the Southern Washington Fleet used two years, purchased by Fleet in Seneca, Oregon. Log bunks removed and fifth wheel installed and pulled a low boy trailer hauling logging equipment in Eastern Oregon. Nothing had ever been done to update the truck. It was found, it found a new home in Wilsonville at a dealership. That is where the present owners found it and took it home to Medford, where they worked on restoring it as a flatbed. They have taken it to several truck shows since it came up. It came to its present home at Pacific Northwest Truck Museum. So we're doing the museum in 99, so it's been, it's, it's been in their venue for over 20 years. Yep. Oh, this is a small one, 1960 Freightliner. See, the cab over engine design was a boon to truckers because it allowed them to pull longer trailers and still meet length laws. But getting to the engine for a service was a major headache. In 1960, Freightliner made a major breakthrough with a cab that tilted 90 degrees in only 38 seconds. Nineteen fifty four Kenworth um, half cab design. It's hmm. interesting, it's a half cab design. <laughs> Is that just the cab? Oh, part of it. <laughs> yeah, this is like the the gray you have the grill, the headlights, and the bumper, and this is like just a, uh, a section of the cab, the front of the cab. Uh, 1953 Kenworth. This tractor was used in and around the Northwest to transport berries and other products. It was restored to the present condition by Monty Theon. Th uh, Theon. So 1949 Kenworth. 1946 Kenworth. It's in 1931, Kenworth. 1957, Mac. 
Oh, it's a 73 Kenworth. Let's see, truck and trailer were purchased new by Exxon. Hawk Oil Company acquired them in 1978, using them to transport products from pipeline terminals in Eugene and Chico to Medford. The, the truck and trailer have been in service up to the present time. This much loved set was replaced only due to capacity and economics. That was that eight? It has eight million miles logged and is in perfect running condition. It's the airbrush logo on trailer. Oh, that's a hawk. That was on the back. That's uh, 2009 Sterling Night Shift prototype. In early 2008, the Daimler Corporation Product Development Department ordered a day cab truck from the Sterling, Ontario, Canada manufacturing plant. This 2009 model was delivered to the engineering department on Swan Island in Portland, Oregon. It was then converted to, into a 51-inch integral sleeper. Three types of sleeper fabrication were used to make this one-of-a-kind one kind, one truck. The truck saw limited testing before the decision was made to shut down the Sterling production line. With only 8,100 miles, the truck was put into storage until January 2013 when it was donated to the Pacific Northwest Truck Museum. It would be used to transport museum trucks and equipment to shows and other events in the Pacific Northwest to promote the museum's efforts to preserve the history of the Pacific Northwest. So I joined the museum in 2013, so about 10 years. Or actually 10 and a half. Night shift prototype. 2009. <laughs> See, this is a 19, 1966 uh, Kenworth. Nineteen fifty nine Ford uh, one ton. Searchlights. What searchlights? <laughs> Old blue. Let's see. Nineteen fifty two auto car. See, originally built for Montgomery War, the U.S. Navy needed auto car trucks. The U.S. Navy equipped the truck as a two-tank retriever, two-axle truck. This truck was in storage until 1998 when Mr. Brett Long purchased the truck in 1999 or 2000. He shortened the tank retriever nine feet during restoration and installed the dump bed as it is today. Yeah, this one looks, yeah, this one looks a little near it's a Kenworth. Oh, 93. <laughs> 93 Kenworth. See, so built as a prototype to debut for the year 2000, the truck still has some of the test equipment still in intact. The grill was made of two different types of metal screens to see which looked better and what would hold up longer. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Line, Ford F6. Oh, hydraulic drill. No, that's what it is. in here. Well, 
these ones are a lot earlier. See, 1924. TT flatbed. Yeah, they got a lot older, older ones in here. Like this. It's a 1940 Ford. Harmon Herring's in. Twenty four, Ford TT, forty eight, Diamond T, Model two oh one. It's the 1919 Samson, three quarter ton. That's an oldie right there. It's a 1917 Maxwell. Nineteen sixteen Moreland. Some nice trucks in here. Two forty seven half ton pickup Dixie. See nineteen eighty five Harold Butch Kent went to a state sale in Dixie, Washington, near Walla Walla, where he found this pickup in pretty rough shape. Engine only ran on five cylinders during the restoration while reassembling the freshly painted cab and managed to upset it himself inside. The cab needed repair along with Butch, who injured one leg, which took several months to heal. <laughs> See, fuel, these are fuel delivery truck wrenches. See, gasoline delivery truck wrench, a barrel wrench. Wow, gravity feed carburetor. Gravity feed two carburetor, so it was gravity fed. That's that's interesting. Nineteen twenty five Moreland. It's actually a starting <laughs> it's a starting procedure. There's a lot of cool tracks in here. Nineteen twenty five Chevrolet. Sorry about the apologize for the glare. Oh, that's a so this this one right here, the twenty five, it's actually uh um yeah, it's a hearse. See, the one-ton Chevy chassis was purchased new and shipped to Spain where the hearse body was added. The body made of hand-carved olive wood uh, was built in the early 1900s and initially horse-drawn. Guy Carr, owner of Carr Chevrolet in Beaverton, Oregon, found it in, the, in Spain in the early 1970s and had it shipped back to the U.S. for restoration. The Series M truck is some somewhat rare only a few were built in 1925 before it was purchased replaced by the larger s series r and it's been here since 92. yeah it's pretty neat
white truck engine model 250A. I like seeing these are cool, the cutaways and the ones with the cutaway. What's this? Oh, pre 1900 horse drawn green wagon. Harvester. Twenty-five wrecker, a Dodge wrecker. Wow, that is a lot of wrenches right there. <laughs> there are 1,006 wrenches on this wall. <laughs> See, the monkey wrench got its name thanks to a mistranslation. So it was invented by Englishman Charles Monkey, who called it an adjustable spanner. When it was imported to USA, it was, it was to be called the Monkey Ranch. However, we wrote the name the way it sounded, hence the Monkey Ranch. This tidbit is for those of us who saw Phil Holsheimer's vast collection. Yeah, there's over a thousand wrenches in here. I was going to say, that's a lot of wrenches. Look at all them. There's over a thousand of them. A thousand and six. Next is the trolley. <laughs>
Those are really cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just gonna see all these beautiful cars. Are you? Good. What's that? First time. And where are you from? Bend. Oh, wow. Okay. And so are you up here just like having fun or visiting family? Just having fun. <laughs> I like Bend. We had property down there for a while, but it didn't work out, so we, had, we sold it. Wish we had it now. Wow. <laughs> It'd be worth, I think, a lot more money. There's actually a Tumalo, if you know where that is. I do. Yeah. It's out that way. Real, so pretty. Isn't it? The view of the mountains look gorgeous. So these are our two tribute Mustangs here. This one was for all the first responders and military. This has been signed by all these different people. This is, belongs to Gary Alexander. But he's got all these, you know, different people that he wanted to spotlight in here, including Chris Kyle's widow, Taylor Kyle. There, if you know about him, the American sniper guy. That's his widow right there, Taylor. And her father was actually the mayor of Lake Oswego. Oh. At the time, he brought the car and had it signed by her. Yeah, and her dad was the mayor. So it's done an amazing job. These yeah, engines are it's a nice car. And that one over there, that's owned by a New York firefighter, EMT retired. And so he was back in New York during 9-11 and was involved in all that cleanup and everything there that was going on. And so he redid the engine, and it's amazing. I don't know that much about it. He could probably tell you everything. He's not here today, but he does come in periodically. Same as Frank. Did Carol really sign this or no? Um, I guess so. I mean, maybe he signed it when they went off the factory floor. I'm not really sure. 
I wonder how old he is now. He's got to be like 90 something, doesn't he? I think. T Ford custom body speedster. Oh, here's an oldie, you know, 1919 Ford Model T school bus. Let's see, 1957 Ford Thunderbird. Nineteen thirty eight Ford convertible coupe. Nineteen thirty six Ford Phaeton. Yeah, some nice cars in here. Is this oh. nineteen forty five simplex service cycle. Thirty six cord eight ten Phaeton. Nineteen thirty seven Ford Coupe. cards. <laughs> Let's 
62. Martinizing special. Oh, I see a. Uh, it looks like a uh, Ferrari. 1917 Stutz Bearcat replica. 33. Oh, something off of a Wow. That is fam. That is nice. The engine is a straight eight, supercharged with um, the steering box and uh -huh. the and the rear and all put together. The Lifestyles Corner. Garments for centuries from veils and turbans to baseball caps and bike helmets. It would be a fashion statement and compliment an outfit in days gone by. Women wouldn't think of leaving the house without hat and gloves. <laughs> Many people, some of their best memories are the smash, smell of fresh baked bread and or cookies. Bread is a staple in many countries. There are flatbreads, pocket breads, rolls, rye, rye breads, crusty artesian breads, and the list goes on, all producing a wonderful aroma while baking. Pioneers bake bread in cast iron pots over open fires or in wood burning snow, stoves. Cookies are another favorite treat that fills the house with great smells. Over the years, favorites have been oatmeal drop, ginger creams, brownies, molasses, Crinkles, chocolate chip, peanut butter, and snicker girdles, just to name a few. Thank you. Come back for the steam up. I will. Oh, that's a trolley right there. Yeah, last thing I'm going to do is the double decker uh, uh, trolley. And it's over this way. And that'll be the last thing for, for here. That's that's it right there. So the last thing I wanted to do here was uh, go on the, uh, the trolley. So that's what we'll do next. So I'm heading to heading to that station right now.
So I'm gonna go in here and purchase a ticket and I will see you in a few. Right. Oh, <laughs> yep, somebody was listening. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, everybody seems to be going up. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> everybody's got to go up, get the best view. Still it already. Yeah. I wonder how long they wait to go. You want me to put your tickets in here? I like your Okay. You didn't start it yet, did you? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, you can see, is that Mount Hood over there? I don't know. It's in between the Oh, I trees. think on our ride through we'll see that old trolley. Oh, yeah. That probably. was talking about. Yeah. Anyone here familiar with riding the trolley here? No. It's a 1927, approximately, um, standard class uh, trolley built in Blackpool, England. Oh, where wow. It was, where it was operated from the, tw the 20s into 1960-ish, and then uh, shipped out here. Oh, wow. Um, and it's been operating in Oregon and various places uh, up through till just about now. Huh. Was, so in this in the early '60s when it came, it just it was someplace else. That, it was uh, it's been a couple of places in Oregon. It was a Willamette Shore trolley. Oh, okay. For quite some time. Yeah. Running into Portland, and also at the old version of the Oregon Electric Railway Society's location, which was out in. Oh man, I wish I could remember the name of it. Huh. Uh, I'm kind of new to Oregon, so I'm not really oh, too gotcha. familiar with the name of the town, but. It was out on, I believe, Highway 26 somewhere. Oh, okay. Small town and not well, not the same size as Brooks, but yeah. uh, more remote. Okay. So when this became available, it was quite the upgrade. Oh yeah, I bet it was. And of course, everything I can't built. imagine moving it here. Uh, we have photos of it coming across. Uh, well, coming from the boat. On the land. And that's, oh, really? That's pretty interesting. I bet. I wouldn't want to be the crane operator. Yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of top yeah. heavy, but uh, yeah, it's it's lived quite the life. Sounds like it. And the sister car to this one is still there in Blackpool, England. Uh, I wonder if they are using it. They do. Oh, that's mm -hmm. neat. Not not real regularly. I love these old seats. Aren't they're, they great? Yeah. yeah. And the ones downstairs are similar, but they're upholstered. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm definitely gonna have to turn around and go that way. I, I used to take my kids when they were really little, these are my grandkids, I would take them on Amtrak down to California and nice. the original train seats, if you got to the back of the car, the seats would turn around so I could, you know, have all my kids facing me and they had a nice fun play area. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Trains are fun. Uh-huh. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Actually, I'll sit here. And we're waiting on for actually more folks to ride here. Okay. okay. We're kind of short-handed today, so I'm gotcha. a nice motorman to and conductor stuff. today. Oh. <laughs> I'm off, so oh, that's awesome. a little slower operating. I just didn't want to sit backwards because it's going to go that way. Yep. Oh. Let's do this. Oh, 
Yeah. You're not going to see much on the side that we're on, Layla. Me too. Yeah, yeah. You, you really feel it warming up in here already, uh, just despite us sitting here. Yeah, as soon as it stops moving, you know, there's not near as much. We don't have that breeze coming through here. Yeah. Too bad you guys don't have some crazy old British clothes on. <laughs> God, this thing's almost almost 100 years old. Yeah, that's pretty big old. It'll be 100 years old in, in what, 2027? Uh-huh. So this is 90, 96, so 96 years old. And, you know, really, this used to be a major mode of transportation over there at that time. There's the back of the log and there's the soft shop. I gotta make sure you grab the soft shop when we leave. So I just switched sides. I can see everything's over, like over on this yeah, side. Yeah, there's nothing over there. There's hardly there. anything over there. Everything's yeah. on the left hand side. Oh, wow. Yeah, check it out. Out that thing got burnt. Those rail cars it is incredible. Yeah, there's nothing but trees over on that side. <laughs> yeah, and so, hops. There's hops over there. Huh? There's hops. We're coming up to the hop fields. My mother-in-law used to pick hops when she was a kid out here. It's kind of interesting how they do it. They they tie those up at the beginning of the season and then the plants grow up there. And then when they're time to pick, they let the lines down so they can just you know, get up really easily. Another one of those things. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks almost like a bus. Cool thing, I think it is. It's just that, um, came, this came from the UK. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I have a, I have a friend. I have one of my face, a couple of my Facebook friends live over in the UK. Um. Have you been here doing the steam up? No. Out here on the. Oh yeah, it's so. Fun. I I'm not from around here. Oh, so. you're not. I do. Oh, where are you from? Um, from Bend, Oregon. Oh gotcha. I I just drove uh like two and a half hours to get up here. Oh wow, you should come during the steam up. It's so much fun. There's just activity everywhere. This whole area right here is full of swap meat stuff. Mm -hmm. Like it is now, kind of. Oh no. But more. It's really full. But yeah, more. All of this, <laughs> like all that whole area, will be full of swap meat stuff. Oh, I didn't come out this far. There's some of those lights I wanted to get some more of. Dang it. I like to get old, uh, different kinds of lights from cars mm -hmm. and barns and things. 
and I turn. I have a couple of old oil cans that I cleaned really well because they they have the spouts that pull down that are on hinges and they are work. They work great for doing. Oh, is this where we exit? Baskets. No. Oh, no. He'll. They have to turn around. They'll just go now that we're that we're gonna go backwards. Really? Yeah. Oh, so now we're gonna go the other way. Unless they're yeah, there's only one trap here. Yeah, they just have to switch directions. It didn't there didn't used to always be so much What in the world? Uh, what in the heck? What is that? He, it, there's a guy down there walking that. It must have something to do with changing the direction of the train. It's something that's attached to the top, so I think he turns it around and reattaches it. Hello? Hello. Yeah, we're moving the, the trolley pole around. Yeah. So we can head back the other way, because you always have to have the trolley pole trailing. Not leading. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll you'll have a to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Did, this didn't it used to go all the way around? No, not um, here. It's always just gone out and back. Yeah, the, we could go a little further if the um, the traction engine were not where they are. Uh -huh. Those uh, electric locomotives. Uh, but we need to repair, get more track to get those out of the way. Yeah. So we can go all the way to the end like we used to. Yeah. But, uh, we're also planning for a loop. A what? A loop. In other words, complete the run. Oh, yeah. So we don't have to do this sort of thing. Yeah. And that way we could run actually two cars during steam up. Uh huh. And really keep it moving. Yeah, that would be great. I totally agree. So, yeah, so this is the way it goes with. Any volunteer oh, yeah. organization, you never know people are running. So. My husband was the president of the logging museum for a long time. Oh, wow. Okay. And he so just. You heard it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he resigned when we were going into the new year, and but he's still the vice president, so he just doesn't have to be as committed as he was before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure, sure, yeah. But it's just fun, it, you yeah, know. It is. It he is. just and he enjoys talking to people and telling you them. He to. just has a lot of history in his mm -hmm. head from right, all the years of his dad <coughs> being a logger. Mm -hmm. so it, the he, he, has a lot of, he enjoys it. But this is his busy time of the year with work, so it, mm -hmm. it's hard for him to commit to a lot. You know, so many weekends. Sure, sure. Yeah, it does uh, take a bit of your time. I'm, yeah. I'm retired.
the our conductor said this is a, uh, a double decker trolley, uh, an electric uh, double decker trolley um, from 1927. It originally came from uh, uh, from England. thing is uh, 96 years old, it'll be 100 years old in, in 2027. Station and what was what was the name of the town and where it came from? Blackpool, England. Blackpool, England. All right there. A picture of that. Then you have the selfie info. Oh, look at the inside down here. Yeah. Quite the, quite the upholstery job. All right. Thank you. That's a pretty cool building. the exit. That's the last thing I wanted to do, actually.
Yeah, that was pretty cool. I like that, uh, that trolley. <laughs> I think it's pretty neat. I also have a, the other thing I have going on is a swap meet. Of course, we won the largest in Salem. 